Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're diving into Premiere Pro, and I'm gonna be color grading clips from the brand new DJI Mini 4 Pro. This drone is great, and I just got back from a really cool trip with it. However, you can only shoot in D log M. So I wanna see how far we can and can't push this footage, and I also wanna run you through exactly how you can get the most out of your DJI Mini 4 Pro footage if you've got one and you're shooting with it. So without further ado, let's dive into Premiere Pro, and let's get this video started. Okay, so here we are in Premiere Pro and I've got three clips and I've got three clips for a reason. So the first one is this clip right here. This is on the Algarve coast in Portugal. Absolutely stunning location. And then they're all from the exact same day, exact same location. But this clip here, as you can see in the Lumetri scopes, you can see here on the left, we've got quite a lot of clipping in this area of the shot. So this is gonna be interesting to see how the DJI Mini 4 Pro actually handles it in these kind of lighting conditions, if you will. We've then got this clip here, in my opinion, perfectly exposed. This is all straight out of camera. And then we've also got this clip here, which is a top-down shot, which is a little bit brighter, but still very well exposed. You always wanna have a little bit of room to bring down those shadows to add the contrast back into the shot. But as you can see, D Log M actually looks pretty good. I'll be honest with you. I am kind of blown away with how good it looks. And even though it isn't D Log, where you can push and pull a whole lot more, it still gets you 95% of the way there. Maybe not 95%, but let's say 75% of the way there, at least in my experience. So first things first, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna color grade this clip and then we're gonna copy paste the settings onto these ones and well, on these two clips. And then from there, we'll be able to adjust and, and go from there. So I'm just gonna show you my full workflow and let's uh, just test some things out together. So first things first, everything, every time I come in to color grade any footage, I always have the Lumetri scopes open to make sure I'm not pushing or pulling anything too far. And instead of just adding one of my LUTs, which you can go and check out linked in the description below, of course, I'm gonna be running you through everything from start to finish all manually. So we're gonna start here with the shadows. I'm gonna be pulling these down. Now, instantly I can see we are getting a, a very nice spread in the Lumetri scopes, but I don't wanna be pulling them too far. I feel like just in here and in here might get a little bit too dark. If we do, we're gonna add a little bit of contrast back, and then we're also gonna see if we can pull these highlights down. We absolutely can. That's actually saved them quite a lot, but you lose all the all the goodness and the richness in, in the middle of the shot. So we're not gonna pull them all the way down. This is a bright shot anyway, so everything is fine in my opinion there. And if you do wanna see a little before and after of your color grade, you can press this little FX button right here, and that just gives you a pretty good overview of where you're at. We're gonna dive into curves now, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the, drop the shadows, we're gonna increase these midtones right here. We don't wanna push them too far, and I can already see right here, definitely, and you can see in the Lumetri scopes, we have quite a lot of information in the highlighted parts of this area. So maybe I just pushed the exposure a little too far. Of course, when you're shooting with the DJI Mini 4 Pro, well, I'm just gonna call it the Mini 4 Pro. I don't know why I'm seeing DJI every time. But if you're shooting with the Mini 4 Pro, you can't change the aperture, which is kind of far from ideal. I mean, it's tiny, so it's understandable. So you've got to make sure you're always updating ND filters. Otherwise, you either have to drop your ISO, and you can, of course, only drop that so far, or you drop your, oh, you increase your shutter speed. So not really ideal if you want to be keeping that 180 degree shutter rule, but either way, I guess in my opinion, I'd rather get the shot and it look good rather than have incredibly nice, perfectly cinematic blur because, well, yeah, I'd just rather get the shot. But anyway, moving on. Let's, uh, w as you can see, we're not really pushing or pulling things much. Like look at this tone curve and we've already added so much contrast into this shot. So this hopefully is where we're gonna add most of the changes into the color space of this. So first things first, I'm gonna come in here. Whoop. I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna desaturate the greens. Definitely in the mountain up here, didn't like that look whatsoever. And then I also wanna remove quite a lot of these yellows. And just like that, we've kinda of had a bit of a two birds, one stone. Quite a lot of this gets removed, the orange here, but we should be able to add that in. If we come into the hue versus saturation here, we can, I guess, play around a little bit with a wider scope here. And we're just going to increase this a little bit more because of course these colors are classic orange and teal colors, which is perfect. And then we're also gonna drop the luminance of this to see if we can kind of balance this out a little nicer. So even just turning off the curves and back on, 
Things are looking very, very clean. I'm really liking the way this footage is looking. And then I'm gonna come into Luma versus Saturation. Whenever I have something really bright in my shot, I don't really want any color coming from it. So what you can do here is you can choose a part of your shot, the, the luminance range. So if we're just attacking the highlights, we're gonna be using this up here. And we can just drop this a little bit. And that just removes most of the color from especially the white parts of the shot. And then moving slowly but surely, that's why I lead this nice little curve here. And that just makes sure there isn't like a hard like, all right, there's color here, but there's color here. That kind of just flows it on. So either way, let's have a look at our before and after. I think things are looking they're looking pretty tasty. They're shaping up for sure. This is another area where we're gonna be able to add a little bit more juice into the shot. We're gonna first start off by playing with the highlights. We're just gonna add a little bit of blue to the highlights and maybe a little bit of blue to the shadows as well. Hopefully that affects the water and takes that greenish tint out. But we are gonna add some warmth into these mid-tones. So a little before and after, definitely vibing that 100%. And then we're gonna come in here, add a vignette, Nothing too, too crazy. I think we're also gonna wanna drop this saturation. Actually, no, we're gonna do that with masks. So anyway, this is our base grade before and after. And as you can see, it looks, uh, looks pretty tasty. I'm actually really happy with this, but we're gonna make this quite a lot better with a bit of grading. Now, the first thing I'm noticing here is this yellowish orange kind of reflection. Unfortunately, there was a load of seaweed in the water throughout this whole coast. So it wasn't ideal for, you know, specific teal and orange colors, but we'll make the most with what we've got. All right, so we're gonna add another Lumetri color effect right here. So just open this drop down menu, add Lumetri color effect, and this is gonna give us a blank slate. And then we're gonna come into effect controls in the top left corner. And then we're gonna close this one. This is our base grade and we can check by just hitting FX. Yep, that's our base grade and then we're gonna add a mask. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to expand this over the image like that. Whoop. I'm gonna expand this over the image just like this and we're going to invert it and we're going to add a feather and we're going to expand the mask. We're gonna increase this feather quite, quite a lot and then we're just gonna to come to the tone curve and we're gonna drop just like that, just like that. I don't, I don't wanna affect the sky. We're just gonna drop the uh, the dark parts, the shadows, and that's gonna just give a little bit more, I guess, oomph into that vignette without affecting the sky all that much. That's why I like doing it. And then every time you wanna add a new mask, pretty much you just add a new Lumetri color effect. So we're gonna add another radial mask right here. I'm gonna make it look a little something like that. And then we're gonna increase the feather. We're gonna increase the expansion. That's just to make sure, once again, there's no none of those hard lines. And we're not gonna invert it this time, but we are gonna change the rotation just like that. And then we're gonna increase the highlights a little bit. And we're also gonna increase the exposure just a little bit, not, not, not too crazy. I'm gonna draw this over a little bit more of the image there. And that's just gonna sell a little bit more light coming into the shot. And then last but not least, we are going to add another Lumetri color effect, another mask if you will. And then we're gonna to come to this part of the shot right here, just like that. We're once again going to increase the feather quite a lot increase the mask, mask expansion. And then we are going to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna hit the hue versus saturation, get this little dropper out, make sure we're 100% getting the right spot. And we're just going to drop the saturation of that area. And I want that to cover the water as well, just like that. Okay, very happy with that. Now, if we come back here, it shouldn't be affecting any of this green stuff right here. If we hit play, just like that, cool. Things are looking good, boom. And it's not too crazy. I'm. I'm quite happy with this color grade so far. Like I said, you're not gonna be pushing and pulling it like normal D-log, but you know, we can get pretty close. So after all of those masks, if we turn everything off now, this is where we started. Whoop, back to the clip there. This is where we started. Mask, 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 boom, base grade. Happy with that. Like I said, this was not a really ideal shot because of the harsh light, but the next two clips, are gonna be pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do here is in a normal color work, color grading workflow, I would take this Lumetri color effect and I would command V, paste that on here, and instantly I'm, I'm getting a, a fairly good start. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the shadows quite a bit. I'm gonna increase those highlights. Well, I wanna make sure I can see my Lumetri scopes. As you can see, we've got nothing touching 100, which means nothing is clipping at all, which is very, very ideal. And now what we can do is instead of going through every single time going, 
you know, starting from scratch the whole time. We can just come in here. I've already pasted my stuff in and now we're just gonna be adding masks. And every mask is gonna be different for every clip. So I don't usually copy and paste masks over, but we're just gonna increase the feather. We're gonna increase the expansion just like that. And now we can come in here. We can drop the shadows, come into the curves, drop the dark parts. Oh, drop the dark. I need to invert it. Now things are looking good. Drop the dark parts of the curve and something else that I'm already seeing is this little guy right here. Really not happy with how that looks. Feather, expansion, and then we can either just come into saturation. Yeah, something like that is fine, but we're also gonna do it like this as well. Drop that, happy days. We're gonna come back to our original base grade, which is always gonna be the top one if you command V it properly, if you will. If you, if you have it set up the way I've got it set up, then that's ideal. And we're just gonna drop these highlights quite a lot actually, because we're getting a little bit of questionable brightness there, but I think things are looking fairly tasty. I'm gonna come into the curves and drop the darker parts of the shot once again, nothing too much. I should be looking at my scopes. Boom, this contrast is looking very, very nice. And then all I wanna do is come into this part of my blues and greens. And then I wanna make them a little bit more blue to kind of sell this water. And just like that, happy days. We can look at the, uh, yeah, this is doing all of them. So look at before and after. I'm very, very happy with how things are looking. And then all we've gotta do is come over to effect controls, hit my top one, my base grade, copy. And now paste it onto this, just like that. There we go. I think this is, pretty good already to be fair. I think the only thing I wanna do, and I've been doing this in every single clip, is adding a radial gradient over this kind of section here where the sun is hitting where it's very yellow. I'm really not a fan of yellow in my shots whatsoever, photos, videos, anything, really not a fan. I'm gonna come in here and we're just gonna whoop, and we're just gonna select all the yellow kind of part there. We're just gonna desaturate it a little bit. We can also probably remove the highlights and we're also going to drop the shadows in that area we might be even able to cool it down a little bit no that looks horrible what am i doing all right here we are just drop the saturation like that and now all right we're going to start we've got movement there all right we can come in here make sure the mask is over everywhere we want that's looking good. So what we can do is add a mask path. Of course, I could track this, but this is pretty simple. All we have to do is click the stopwatch. That adds a that adds a keyframe, I should be saying. And then we're gonna come all the way here until you can't see it anymore. And then we're just gonna drag it up and over there. And now if we watch this back, if we can see the mask, that would be really, really handy to see how that is tracking. Okay, we're not gonna be able to see the mask, but either way, I know that it's tracking along in here. Ah, there we go, perfect. Boom, that's sticking over there. And now this shot looks really nice. I'm probably gonna add one more mask. I'm not gonna put the vignette on this shot. I really don't think it needs it. We're just gonna come in here and make this a little bit bigger. And of course, you already know, we're gonna be increasing that mask feather, increasing the expansion. We're gonna be dropping, well, basic correction, come back here. We're gonna be dropping the shadows just like that. And then we're also gonna be dropping the temperature to add a little bit more blue into the water. And just like that, color graded. Done. I think this looks pretty good in my opinion. I mean, the footage looks amazing. I think the colors also look pretty damn good as well. And we've got to think we started from, oh, we started from more or less this to this. I'm very happy with that. I'm also incredibly happy with how this shot's turned out. I think it's looking very tasty. That's the base grade. That's the base grade turned back on. And even this shot here, while it's not ideal lighting conditions, back to the base grade, off and on that is a full breakdown of how I'm gonna be color grading my Mini 4 Pro footage. I love this drone. I think it's great. You can pretty much fly it anywhere. Of course, do your research and make sure you're complying with the laws. But just to be able to put this in any backpack and then get to any location, it doesn't really draw much attention. You're flying and you're good to go. You're getting great clips. So anyway, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's <clears throat> God, my throat. That's gonna wrap up today's video. If you have enjoyed, let me know in the comments down below. If you're new around here, subscribe would mean the absolute world and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.